or make you laugh, make you cry like ain't life funny. Ugh. And this is leading into the other thing I wanted to talk about is that, um, you know, we talk a lot about our mentality and our mind state when we were living together and earlier in our lives. And I think for me, you know, unfortunately, uh, I got cancer like four years ago, like to the yesterday was four years. And you run it, run it. I mean, that's crazy. It's been four years, but, you know, at the time, like literally this was the timeline. I think it was 2017 or 2016, you left LA. We had to leave our apartment. I moved down to like the beach area in my Hermosa beach. And I think it was like a couple months. It was, I know exactly when I felt the uh, symptoms, but on December 31st, 2016, I felt like this horrible pain in my back. And right after, like a month later, I got diagnosed with leukemia. And through all that, we can talk about the process. I think that it wasn't was, even like that. That might have been like two months. I think I left in like August that year, yeah. or something September. Yeah. So it like, was very. I think you left in like October. I think maybe earlier than might have been. been a yeah. Little Actually, bit. yeah, then, it was like yeah, it was like October. Yeah. It was around Thanksgiving, I think. Yeah, that's crazy, man. But you know, my buddy left. I just got, you know, I'm my wife now, but we've decided to move in together. And it was like, everything was going good. And like, before that, I got my health good. I was fat. I would smoke cigarettes and I'd stopped all that. And when we were living together and right before you left, I figured like what I did was get myself in maximum shape. At the time it was to get laid. I'm going to be honest. I was trying to get some pee, <laughs> give it to me, my D and some pee, but um, I got, and then I got sick. And I went through the, a month of like excruciating pain that I was dealing with being a dude and coming up with any reason in my head where I was not something catastrophic wasn't going on in my body. So like, it felt like to me, my back was being ripped apart from the inside. That's the best way I can put it. Oh my God. <laughs> so like, I felt this searing pain in my back. And to me, it was like one of those pains where you just like tweak something real bad. But, you know, I was walking. I was like, I work out a lot. I probably tweaked my back. But then, nothing actually like happened. Like no, you weren't working out. I literally, this yeah. is what happened, Aaron. Mike and Sean came down to visit me and see the mm-hmm. apartment. Yeah. I walked them to their car. And as I was walking back from like saying bye, I just felt like uh, I got struck by lightning, like down my back. And I was like, ah, but I walked in and it didn't like stay. It was just like kind of there. But over the course of days, it got worse. I couldn't sleep. And I was working like I still didn't have a car. So picture this over the course of a month. My daily routine was to ride a bus with my bike to my job. I would either bike home or I would jog home which was probably three to four miles a night and I still did that for like a week but then I couldn't even do that because my back hurt too much so I was go I would go home from my job my back would hurt all day they had like massage chairs at the place I work so I was like man it's just getting worse but I'm just gonna try to like live through it yeah Um, I would sweat at night like I couldn't sleep my I would like start sweating and I started feeling like these big like bumps but they weren't like showing it was just like a bump yeah I looked it up and I was like oh it's a lymph node like I'm probably sick you know some shit but I went for a month and dude it got worse and worse and I finally had to go to the hospital and uh I went to like two urgent cares in that month and yeah. none of them could tell me anything. They were like, well, there's no structural damage on your back. So you're just probably doing <clears throat> something. So I would go home and be like, cool. And I would do whatever I could. I fucking went to like 24 hour fitness and would sit in the jacuzzi in the morning, then go to work and try to get through the day. And finally I went to the, uh, my wife is like, just go to the ER. We'll go to the ER, they will figure it out. And then we'll pay for it. Cause I didn't even have insurance yeah i didn't have shit right uh we went 
And uh, I, I like will never, this is like the part of getting it where it was like terrible. I went to the ER, I was in pain and I was way, they took a bunch of blood tests and I was like sitting there waiting. And I got, because we were in the ER and I was like laying on a bed, I got to the point where I was like, oh, this is all, I'm about to get, you know, this, I'm fucking around. I'm a hypochondriac. They're going to tell me I have like, yeah. There was like five <laughs> things when I looked up my symptoms that weren't leukemia that yeah. were like, you know, whatever it was. Just and to bring some, head, uh, like, they're going to tell me I got fucking this dumb shit. I'm going to go home. I'm going to smoke a joint and I'm just going to yeah. laugh about this because finally this is about to be over with. And we were laughing. And then this doctor came in. I think his name was Kennedy, this white dude. And like, he was just like, I was like looking for him to be, you know, like looking at him to gauge what I was like needed to do. And he was like stone faced. And I was like, so like, what's up? And he's like, um, he's like, we're going to have to like put you upstairs. You got, I'm really sorry to say that like you got leukemia and like that thing you see in movies where it's like a ringing and you it like makes all the noise. You can't hear it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, man, dude. I remember that shit so vividly because like I started, I just, my instantly, I was like, am I going to die because the pain I was in, I was like, I'm going to, if it's in my back, right. how do you get cancer out of a back? You right. know, how does that, I'm going to be, I, everything went through my head, but I was like, am I going to die? And the guy was like, I don't know. That's all a doc. Like, so my wife and I cried and I had to like, call my mom and dad which was like to me the worst part of it because they're like across the country and it was so fucking wild dude so trippy so like in that hospital they're like you don't have insurance right and i was like dude well like what am i gonna do so they put me in the, up in this hospital and they put like a th they put these thing called like a it's like a port i think it's something where it's like lying like for like dialysis yeah yeah but it's like yeah. a line that they go into you put it in your heart but it's so they can yeah. draw blood and like put medicine in and like i didn't even know what leukemia what leukemia was what yeah. i had they're just doing all this shit and i like finally it took me like an hour for the, of me sitting in a bed and this lady came in and she looked at me and she goes um I'm not supposed to be here telling you this, but this hospital can't help you. You're too, this is too bad. We don't know how to, we don't have the, and I'm like in a hospital, I was like, what do I, like, what? And she goes, I work for like UCLA. Like she worked at both hospitals and she yeah. goes, you got to get there. And she's like, you can't tell them I told you this, but you have to get there and you just have to tell them that you're, don't tell them you came here at all. Just tell them that you yeah. think you might have leukemia, like say that and have them draw yeah. your blood so you can get seen. Yeah. And I was like, I don't. And she goes, I'm going to have somebody call you. And I literally, somebody called me from UCLA, like, sir, I have to whisper this. Um, you got to This is how you're, and they kind of explained to me how, I had to do that. So I had to go through that crazy yeah. shit. That and shit is wild. I had to go to UCLA, dog. And they were like, you don't have insurance. So we're going to, but they can't, they can't turn you away for that. Yeah. So I got, I, there, they didn't have any beds. And at this point, like the pain in my back, I wasn't getting any drugs at the other hospital. Like they didn't give me anything. So the pain is at 20. I'm, it's at the point where I'm like about to pass out from the pain. It's crazy. Yeah. And I get, they put me, they don't have any beds. So they put me in a hallway with like, just in a hallway in the ER. Yeah. I'll, like, this is the other thing I'll never forget. I, they put me in there and Kendra had to go because her mom and dad had to come out and like drive us around to get this done, which God bless them. Like, I've, we weren't as close, but they like showed up. They were fucking amazing. And uh, I'm sitting in there and she leaves. So it's just me. And I'm talking to this doctor and he's trying to like 
do the doctor shit when you get into a hospital like what's your pain is it from a scale yeah. of one to ten and i'm like crying like my i need something and uh he gave me oxys they didn't do anything so he's like i'm gonna i gotta i'll be right back and then an insurance lady comes and is like we have no we there's nothing so we're gonna set you up with so there's all this like craziness going on around me er no yeah. noises i'm people telling me i don't have insurance so in my back of my mind i'm like oh well they're gonna make me leave and i'm gonna die of cancer because of this so i don't know what's going on and then i talked right. there's like this lady, this was like a hit, like a guardian angel type girl, this woman, uh, this black chick, and I think her name was like Michelle. It started with an M, but she had sickle cell. Yeah. And bad, like real bad. And she had, was like, she couldn't like, she was in a lot of pain, but she was like the hospital she like she knew everything about all she's like where'd you come from and i told her and she's like oh that place is nice because she had so many problems associated with sickle cell. she's yeah. like you're gonna love it here she's like i'm and she was just so nice but the guy fucking comes and he's like i'm gonna give you delauded because my back like i'm crying she's like trying to you know i just found out everything and the guy gave me delauded which is heroin it's that's what it is yeah. And that did something where I was like talking to the girl and I remember my vision, it started to like twirly and it just twirlied out. Like it kept getting more blurry. And I was just like, I started laughing and then I came to at some point and that girl was still there. And she was like, I thought you dead. I thought you died, motherfucker. You just started <laughs> laughing and then you just passed out. Oh, but, man. but I got through all that dude and like, I can't, I don't want to explain everything about this because yeah. it's just a lot, but like I blood, like leukemia is a blood cancer. So yeah. the, I don't know the seriousness of what I had, but I, from the people at the beginning, I think I was like a week, if I would have waited a week, I'd be dead. That type of shit. I mean, dude, like, I mean, see you, you, I don't know, but you got a different kind of mentality to me. Cause like. I have just had shit happen to me where I've been sick or hurt or whatever. So like, if I have some shit going on with me, like I wanted to tell you, like when you were laughing, say like, oh, I'm just tripping, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just a hypochondriac. Like I've literally done that like eight times. No, <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> like, a warning to everybody. Yeah. Like, but yeah. here's the thing, Aaron, you know, you'll know. Cause even me, I yeah. was taught, here's why I didn't go immediately. You know, I have a sister who's a nurse, right? Yeah. And my sister knows me personally and I am a hypochondriac. If I get a, if I get a cough, <clears throat> I might have can, you know, it's one of those. Right. Things. So it's like right. this, I, w I looked it up, dude. I went on WebMD and I go sw midnight sweats, pain in the back, swollen lymph nodes, type that into Google. And yeah. all you're going to get is a bunch of shit going, go to the hospital immediately. These are <laughs> symptoms of leukemia. Like I knew it was leukemia. Uh, but I got like my sister's like just go to urgent care and they're telling me they can't they don't do blood tests they just do x -rays. yeah yeah that's all Nothing, they do sprays you know? and x-rays at urgent care yeah so uh yeah. it was one of those things man stuff, you can't yeah. ignore but I knew it I was sweating it was just like abnormal and it was just getting so much worse where I should have yeah. gone much earlier but you know going through it dude like blood cancer is a different thing they can't cut it out of you you know, it's right. not like you get a tumor. It's like, it's not an easier process. I don't ever want to diminish anybody's cancer. But to me, my shit was, how do you get blood, cancer out of blood? Are you going to suck all my blood out? Are you going to, and basically the only way I could get it, some people can get radiation and it makes it go away. But mine was so bad that the only thing they could do is kill my immune system and like get a match of somebody else that is like a trillion in one shot that you'll ever find a match because it's not within your family yeah they have to get a stem cell from whatever these genetic markers are and i did get a match and i didn't know who the person was i do know now like this is how crazy this is my match is a lady in australia yeah you know what I mean? Like, right. and they somehow got this woman's stem cells, shipped them to America, put them in my body. And then 
that took a month. I was in the hospital initially for a month and a half, got out. I was cancer free, basically. And they kept my immune system from killing me in that time. And then like, basically, six months after I got diagnosed, I got my stem cell transplant, which is a miracle, dude. Just that, that process is yeah. crazy to me that if you told me what the odds were at the beat when they, I was told I needed to have it, I'd be like, well, I'm dead. And there are people that wait 10 years. Like if you're black and you need this, you're fucked. Cause yeah. it's like, or if you're Asian, some, for some reason you are like, that's the worst thing. They can't find the, the genetic like matches and stuff, but I got yeah. it, dude. And it's like a million and a one thing that I did, I survived. And even in surviving, like I've met people that, like I met a guy who got a reaction called grafts versus host where the, the immune system they put into your body, that's the transplant actually yeah. thinks your body is a foreign substance. So it'll attack you by mistake. Right. Like it happened to me and I got swollen legs a little bit. Um, and like I had that kind of issue and like, um, some sort of like nerve pains, but that's sort of minimized a little bit. And I do a lot to stay active, but I've met people like I met a guy who went blind. I've yeah. seen people in like wheelchairs that they can't even go outside because of the, like the sun creates a reaction on their skin where they basically it's, you know, yeah. I mean, it's, it's so just crazy because like in all this story and what we were talking about before, just like meeting strangers and all that and just, you know, all this kind of connect back because that's really kind of how you got saved, man. Like that lady that told you in that one hospital, like, yo, I work at UCLA. Like she just so happened to even be working that day, dog. That's what you I know mean. What I'm like all that shit, you know what I'm saying? Like it's so many things. And then like for her to be like, yo, this dude is kind of fucked if I don't give him these key little points right here. You know what I'm saying? Like, sometimes in life, like, it's like, I don't know, man. Like, I don't even know if you, you can't even really call that, like, chance. You know what I'm saying? It's like all that kind of really went that way because it was supposed to. You know what I'm that's saying? That's why. Like, almost like. That's why it's, you got it's crazy, like, dog. Me, it, like, flipped my mentality. I was saying all this, one, because it's crazy. I think it's, like, good for people to hear this that are either have like somebody in their life that has cancer or get gets it because like one thing that was terrifying for me is whenever you like it just happens like I didn't even know what leukemia was and even like the word tumor I went through something even after I got all this done where they thought I had a cancer in my kidney because I had a tumor on my kidney show up and it wasn't cancerous, but somebody like I went to a, a I, I think it was a urologist or it was somebody like a kidney doctor, whatever that is. Yeah. The guy's like, you got a tumor on your kidney and we're going to have to take it out. But we got to figure it out first. And, but that was all he told me. And then he had to go. And it's right. like, for like somebody that's going through this, like a lot of the things you don't know what to expect. And I think it's really, I, hopefully I can do something more than this in the future, but just even this to hear somebody who went through it survived. And, you know, I, I don't like want to jinx it cause I'm doing really well. And, but there's a lot of people that don't even make it through. I, sometimes I feel I get like imposter syndrome talking about it because I do know there's people that suffered a lot more and went through a lot yeah. you know, worse shit. And it's not to minimize what I went through because there are other, like I had to get stent, like injections in my spine and shit yeah, like man. that where man, man. I went through a lot, but I think it's like important for people to hear this. Like I said, to have a story that they can go to and be like, if you're going through and you just got the news that I got four years ago to hear somebody like it can, it will, you just have to like go through it. And All right. it's, it's in it's possibilities and everything. Yeah. Basically. And it can work yeah. out. But like you said, the, there's so many things that happened in that scenario I went through, like that doctor or this yeah, man. person, like all that where it's, I'm not, I don't believe in like destiny or fate, but it's hard not to because yeah. everything it's like, I met Kendra and we fell in love and then we moved together 
And instead of like running away from like, we were only dating for like a year, maybe when that happened. Yeah. So it's like, we met people who literally told us that whenever they were diagnosed, the person they were with left them. You know? Right. So like, she didn't do that. She stuck by me and like cared for me and her family. Hey, man. I just want to give a quick little props to myself on that window because I used to let Matt borrow my car to go over to see Kendra, y'all. So, yep. you know what I'm saying? Yep. Don't say, don't say <laughs> that your boy, that your boy don't be You're looking there, out. You're man. You help me out. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Your boy used to look out. But, <laughs> but, um, you taught me how to drive manual transmission cars, too, just so I could hey, use that car, bro. <laughs> exactly. But on the real, real, though, man, I just wish that, man, I could have been there even more for you, dog. Honestly, like, I'm I glad mean, you weren't because it was bro. too much. It was like almost like that had to happen in that way because that was the only way to involve anyone other than her in it is just I would have made your ass go to the hospital sooner, dog. Yeah, you <laughs> I would have I would have picked I, mean, I would have wrestled hard. you, dog. I think in those situations, that's one of those things where it's so hard for somebody that's not the person to yeah, step man. in because like yeah. even me, you don't want to acknowledge it could be cancer. You know what I mean? Like I right. knew it was something bad and i even knew what it i had seen what it could be and that's what it was but you don't want to go man and somebody's gonna right. like keep making excuses so i don't I know mean, it's that's, i mean that's i mean like legitimately though what you're talking about like that's what went down with my pops man like you know like he just people make up their mind on shit where it's like man i'm not gonna be moved on this and it's like i don't yeah. you know i, I don't just, want to your do dad that. was older than me too you know somebody yeah. older, it's like there's that's like people my parents' age. They don't. If you got us, we're younger, right? Even you know they don't. It's not that they don't respect our opinion, but they're set in their ways, and they're not right. going to hear our opinion. You know, right? But I mean, it's just one of the. I don't believe in destiny and fate, but it's made me one very thankful. I mean, I'm definitely no. It's not. Person. You know what it is, man. I don't think that it's really what you would call fate so much as it's like natural instinct, you know what I'm saying? Where like, it's even instances in the wild where you ever seen like an animal that would usually kill an animal, see it be hurt and it try to help them, you know what I'm saying? Like, like it'll be like a, uh, like I, like only thing I can think of off the top of my head is like sometimes, an elephant, like I've seen an elephant got shot in a video and it ran to people because it kind of knew like, oh, okay, yeah, y'all can help me, you know what I'm saying? Or like I've seen like before where like it, it wasn't exactly like a lion or something, but like it would be like, you know, like a dog or something would like be licking on like a little baby rabbit and stuff, you know, like just like things like that where you would be like, oh, that could have been worse, you know what I'm saying? Like a pit bull is sitting there like playing with a kitten, you know what I'm saying? And stuff like that. But like I feel like part of that is because in all of us we recognize like a goodness you know what i'm saying and like i mean you gotta realize dog like you are an awesome dude man like you know what i'm saying like for real for real like it's not like you're just like some shit ass person bro you yeah. know what i'm saying like even like i was even kind of saying that with the film school thing like some like we were talking about taking the lead and stuff like you gotta realize bro like and being enlightened like we just get things quick dog like some people don't do that you know what i mean like and it's not that they're not good or bad people are less than they just do things they way you know what i'm saying like some people don't like they catch it and then when they catch it they got it you know what i'm saying but yeah. it might take them four days where it would take you an hour you know what i'm saying but hey we all different you know what i'm saying and like that's kind of the thing that's crazy is like i feel like part of your goodness probably showed in all these people that were saying like look i know this guy ain't got insurance and he ain't got this or whatever and like he's in a bad way we got to help this dude because like partly they are caregivers and that's what they're there to do you know what i'm saying but like they, they went above and beyond, you know what I'm saying, because you were who you were, you know what I'm saying, like, even, like, in what I went through with my dad, man, like, the, like, the doctor that was in the ER was my dad's doctor, he was like, man, in the regular instance, I understand, you know, like, we typically are saying, like, we don't have a response or whatever, like, we just want to try everything we possibly can, like, they were scanning them so many times, trying to do everything they could, you know what I'm saying, it just, yeah. it was what it was, you know what I mean, like, because just like, you know, we're talking about the possibilities and yours all turned out well, like those possibilities can turn the sour way, but it doesn't mean that it was for things to be bad. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not saying like, I'm not like torn up about my pops. Like I will never be able to, you know, oh. fix the hole that's there. You know what I'm saying? Like it's times where it's just like, 
the littlest thing, you know what I'm saying? Like the dude that I'm working with was 62, you know what I'm saying? And like, that's what my, that's how old my dad was, you know what I'm yeah. saying? It's like, and it's like, you don't want to even bring that up to somebody, but like, that's what you're sitting there thinking about while they're talking to, you know, like just regular, like how we are, you know what I mean? It's just crazy how like it bruises your mind in such a crazy ass way, you know what I'm saying? And I'm sure like the same thing with you, it's like, you'll never be able to hear anybody say cancer and not instantly jump back to those moments where it's like oh shit you know what I mean, I'm saying? I, like, for me dude i feel like the thing that i sort of use is like motivation i'm terrified of it but like a lot of the things i had to do to get better you know they use radiation and all these like weird you know even the process of getting the stem cell thing they make you sign documents and like every doctor you talk to is like well this is going to save you now but in like 30 years this could actually give you, you know, all this, this, and this. So it's like, I have like this, like, it's not, I'm not like constantly like worried I'm going to get cancer again, but it's almost like this voice in the back of my head saying that like where I would sit on the couch and not want to do like this, even it's like, you better do it. You know, you don't know if you're going to be able to, you know, go on a run tomorrow or, do this podcast with Aaron tomorrow or have this job tomorrow, you know? So I've seen all those because honestly, man, when I got cancer, I felt like I was on the right, like a really big right. upswing from where we were, you know, everything right. was going right. I got a new place. I love right. this place. I got a girl, you know, I can get all these other things back. Like the, the creativity, I just got to work this job. And all that shit got clipped out from under me. And I thought, you know, I'm never going to be healthy again. I'm never going to be able to w even work out. Like I love working out. I'm never going to be able to do that again. I'm never going to see my mind, all these things. And to, when I got over them all, it just, all the, I still am nervous to talk um, and like be the, the guy. I don't like yeah. that, but I'm more, I will do it and I'm good at it. And I know like things that I would never have put myself to or do before I've made myself do because I went through this and I know it's not that big of a deal. Like right. literally saying, you know, having something at a job that you just started and you might not do that. Like I wouldn't test myself. And now it's just like, this ain't that big of a deal. Let me just see how it goes. And just being lax and almost like, you brought up being like the old cool guy type yeah. of getting more of that in my system where the grim reality of the world is that if I'm here today and I am gone tomorrow, the world's going to keep going, you know, right. Right. we all, you know, have these losses and I don't, I want to be here, but it's not like the world's not going to stop if I'm gone. And that yeah. can be terrifying, but it can be motivating. And that's sort of just... Well, you know what's crazy, man? And, like, we don't... Don't nobody think about this, really. But, like... And this is kind of what I was getting at about trying to just be, like, a nice guy and being happy all the time and just being cool and shit. It's, like, those little things... Like, imagine, for example, all the stories that you tell that are crazy, wild-ass stories that have happened to you. You know what I'm saying? Like, we can go down the list, you know what I'm saying? And, like, this is one thing that really fucks my head up because, like... I've been on varying sides of stories like that, where it's like, man, I was up in the club, man, I seen somebody fuck up my homie, so I stole on that dude, and we yeah. beat their ass and rolled out, you know what I'm saying? And then the other times where it's like, man, we was up in the club and some dude stole on our homie, and then we got jumped and got our ass kicked, you know what I'm saying? And now, like, we all bust up and shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, luckily, that's never happened to me, but, like, I'm just saying, like, things have gone good and bad. Like, same thing like we were saying, like, with all these things, and, like, what you have to realize is those moments kind of shape you into everything. It's even more valuable than money, really. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, mm -hmm. whether it was a good thing or a bad thing, like, because, like, all the times you talk to somebody and did something good, you know what I'm saying? Like, don't that person remembers that. Or, like, even just the moment y'all had together where, like, you and one of your good homies might have just been smoking a bowl and you said the funniest shit ever to him at that moment. And, like, sometimes he thinks about that. You know what I'm saying? And just to be like, man, I wonder what Matt doing right now. Like, that's even more valuable than gold, dog. Because you can't take none of that shit with you. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, like, what's more important to you? Something that'll make you feel good forever or something that is always, you're constantly chasing. You know what yeah. I'm saying? You know what I mean? Damn. So, like, Damn, that's, that's, bro. that's wild, right? So, but then think about this though, knowing that you can do that for somebody and that somebody can do it for you and vice versa, you can also be the evilest person in their mind because like I've done things that I'm sure 
looking back, like people tell that story and be like, man, some crazy black dude beat my ass. I don't even know why, or like yelled at me. And it's like, damn dog, like, why did I do that shit? Like, cause now like I am in their life burned forever as that, you know what I'm saying? And like, they might even see me when they, you know what I'm saying? They might come back my way, you know what I'm saying? Like mistakes I made, you know what I mean? And like, that's why it's like, damn, I do need to try to be doing as much good as possible because you haven't been perfect. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, like, those little things, dog, it could literally be as small as holding a door for somebody, dog. Like, you don't even understand, like, how the mind really works where those things can shape somebody's whole world, bro. And if we all had that mindset, you know what I mean? Like, how bomb this world would be where it's just like, man, I'm going to try to just be the most awesomest person to this dude today. You know what I'm saying? Like, for a minute, I used to do this thing where I would ride the bus and pray for people I didn't know where I would just be like man I just hope everything good happened to that person man like everything they dream about just come true man and like they just had the best day today and tomorrow and the next day and just like I hope they that person just be doing good and it just made me feel good but like I don't really know why I was doing that you know what I'm saying and I kind of stopped but why like you know like why yeah. there's nothing wrong with that at all that's fucking bomb I've never, yeah. I've never done shit like that and yeah I don't know man I feel like a lot of that stuff starts with for me being able to be confident in that you and I are good people, you know, and knowing that whatever my point of view is, I'm never going to be shitty to somebody. I'm not good at being mean to people. If I'm mean to you, it's because I feel like you've wronged me and it very rarely ever happens. So, you know, especially recently and after I got through all the things that we just talked about, I have like a confidence in myself that, I might not know the process, but if I feel like I'm giving, like if I give you advice, it's, I'm not giving you any sort of, there's no bullshit. I don't really bullshit anybody. anymore. I used to bullshit myself, you know, other people a lot. I think that was my main thing was just not being able to if, deliver bad news or things I didn't think people like to hear. And there's right. a way to like be the same. You can do all that stuff too. It's most people would think that's like a negative thing, but like being good people, and like you said, it got me all that positivity when I needed it the most. Like people right. gave me money, dude. People like that I went to church with sent me cards from when I was like, I hadn't seen them in a decade plus. They sent me cards, right. sent me love and called me and gave me money to survive with my, you know. And uh, I think that ultimately the karma, like that's the one thing I think I believe in you know, doing the positive thing, like you said, I bet when you were doing those things on the bus, you had great days. And it was because you were putting yeah. out positive, like energy and, you know, right. that Brody Stevens thing of just like being positive and positive energy and giving everybody a positive push forward and stuff. And well, you know what it kind of is? You ever, like, we be playing sports as, like, momentum and shit. Like, maybe that shit is real in everything you do, dog. You know what I'm saying? Where it's like, oh, you you hit one shot. Then, then your homie made a bomb-ass play. Y'all just balling and scoring and everything just flowing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's just like, uh, they, but then sometimes it goes wrong. Then other team, that shit starts happening for them. You know what I'm saying? Then it's like, your mindset get cloudy too. You know what I mean? It's like, fuck, man, like, I can't, we can't hit a shot now. And it's like, it shifts to them. You know what I mean? Like, maybe that's more so how it is really. And it's so quick like that. Maybe that's really how it works, even on with us on everyday shit, where it's like, you get that positive momentum and you could just ride that wave, dog. And then that one little thing can shift it. And then it's like, you ride that negative wave. And it's like the same way that you can have that positive wave pushing you, that negative wave pushes you where it's oh, like, yeah. Oh, like, oh, oh, this motherfucker gonna cut me off in traffic. And oh, and now she doing this and they doing that. You know what I'm saying? Like, and it just will build where like, if you want to be mad, dude, like, you know, like I've seen you come home plenty of days and me oh, too. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's like, just live in it, man. Just sit there right. and fucking hear that angry voice. Like, man, I'm gonna, I hope somebody says some shit. Right, <laughs> exactly, dog, right. And it's like, but then when you really step back from that shit, it's like, man, I don't even want to be like that, man, damn, like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, it's like, I mean, man, like, I and that's like a working thing, because you and I, I'm not like an, I'm not saying that I'm a perfect guy now, I don't right, me neither. walk me through neither. this life, not and now close. I'm this enlightened guy, like, hey guys, every day is a blessing, no, like, I, every, I'll get an email at work, or like, honestly, something that's going on right now that's a mini conspiracy is I'm like dealing with an insurance company and yeah. dealing with insurance like associated with like medication and stuff is the most one of I mean one of the most infuriating things 
I've ever, it's I've the, literally demonic, yelled huh? on the phone like four days in a row this week for because right. of this injury. So. It's really some evil ass shit. Cause just yeah. like how that woman helped you, you know what I'm saying? It's like, I need help, you know what I'm saying? It's like, and I had insurance for this reason. So like, why are y'all jerking the chain around yeah. when I need this to live? You know what I'm saying? called me the other day, some lady, and was like, oh, uh, you're being audited by your insurance company. They said that they're not your insurance, and uh, we're going to send you a bill for all the hospital stuff that you've had done from 2019 to now. It's like, oh, is that like hundreds of thousands of dollars? Because I, what do you think? I'm going to just pay it? <laughs> So, I mean, I, I don't want to get into that because we've been super positive and uh, like all that shit's temporary anyway, which is, again, something that an old me, I'd be sitting here stewing about it and mad and like, I feel like the things we've talked about um, going through all the struggles that both of us have, you know, I mean, the thing that you said with your dad is something that, you know, we talked about the thing I went through. I can't even imagine going through that. It seems like so much yeah. harder than what I went through. And I'm sure you'd say the same thing about my thing. And yeah, man. realizing that through all those things that you and I, like, that's the most important thing that we've, I don't think I've really ever changed. You know, I've become more of a mature guy and more talented and driven. But as far as like me, if I went and hung out with people I hung out with in college, be, I'm the same bullshitty like i love fucking fucking around with people and joking and being i don't want to be the serious tony right. robbins you know <laughs> inspirational guy that's not me yeah. but, or even like a suit and tie money 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 oh, motherfucker just all the time no you know i just yeah, yeah like and like yeah, we don't man. that's ultimately i think maybe our generation you know got into our heads or whatever but the idea Man, you know what i wish office, dog i just can't i hate it <laughs> oh dude tell me about it bro but no. like you know what i you know what i wish man but then tell me that this isn't exactly how real life is but that you know how like uh like what if you just had like fun tokens you know what i'm saying where it was just like anytime you know what i'm saying like some bomb ass shit go down like y'all just get like like you got like a smiley face in kindergarten like what if that was like a real thing like i don't know man just like a bomb ass system where like you're like maybe on social media you just had like a whole bunch of stickers on your shit because it was just like yo this dude be having bomb ass shit going on all the yeah, time so like so like we it. just yeah he just gets credit for all that shit like i feel like that system would probably like fuck the world up in the long run but like honestly that kind of is what money is too though you know what i'm saying it's just like you just get paid for the job you do and it's like well i'm a doctor so it's like oh good job doctor you get all the money yeah. and then it's like well i'm the trash man it's like well somebody got clean trash so he has some money but you know go about your business you know what i'm saying like you know you don't get the same type of look when you when your numbers ain't as high and it's kind of like that credit system you know what i mean but it's just funny man like we've been talking for a minute i know and i ain't trying to keep on running our mouth because you know we will talk forever but I mean, I think this was a good ass uh, episode, man. Like I said, might had to cut that one down a little no, bit. Cool, cut the, I mean, man, man. Just I, cut, honestly, just cut. I was trying to yeah. sort of explain this because like, I do that other thing with Steve, yeah. uh, uh, and we talk about the other podcast we do at the end, like whatever you want to say, promo, yeah. whatever. But this is we keep joking about it, but I think this is more just therapy that we record <laughs> and we just put it out. <laughs> I mean, you already know me anyway. Like, I'm going to be talking about some crazy shit. So it's like, that's what I do, man. Like, yeah. I like thinking about how you think. You know what I'm saying? How people think. Like, that to me is like something that honestly, I think is the next breaking level of like science and shit, but don't nobody really want to talk about it. You know what I'm saying? Well, it's important like, also. Like, they don't really yeah. teach you how to like navigate through some of this stuff. And I do think podcasts are kind of cool in that way that you can listen to a people that are friends talk through this kind of shit and you might not be able to have that conversation but you can at least see how other people are sort of talking about it and navigating it and it's i mean we're not the people to educate the masses but <laughs> you know it's good to hear people who are relatable i'm not we're just like normal dudes and uh you know i never had anybody really even tell me how like learning and like that kind of thing just how to like think on your own not think to get a job done or like work for right something. you know like i think it's interesting right I well i think that's what uh i think that's where the school system fails a lot of people man it's like 
because like that's kind of where I was wanting to go when I got out of high school you know what I'm saying it's like all right man I didn't learned all this numbers and calculus because like I was in AP classes and shit you know what I'm saying like yeah. it's not like I'm like some dumb person man like I was like one of the top people in my class and the only reason why I really wasn't the only in my class because I just didn't give a fuck enough to be like caring yeah. about studying for every fucking class all the time you know what I'm saying like I would skip school and shit and still make honor roll you know what I mean like it wasn't like I was struggling so that's why to me it was like going to college I wasn't really wanting to fuck with it because I was like, man, I don't want to go back and do more schooling. I just want to just like get out here, start making this money. You know what I'm saying? Because like I can't afford school anyways. You know what I'm saying? And like I get why people should have a degree and all that, but like I don't need a degree for what I'm doing now. You know? What I'm I don't need like, for what we yeah. wanted to do. I don't yeah. know. Like that was the biggest mistake I ever made. But that's a whole yeah. podcast to talk about that bullshit. Right. But yeah. But I just feel like you know, man, like. And just in the whole grand scheme of shit, man, like, I'm with you, man. Like, we, you know, we just doing this shit to have a good time, man. And it's cool to talk to you, bro. You know what I mean? I love like, you, dude. No, man, you know, man, you already know I'm crazy anyways, dog. So it's going to be entertainment while we are. Because <laughs> you're going to be talking about some crazy shit, too. So. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just was like, you know what? Let's get, we've been talking about some deep shit, which we just, yeah, I love what we talked about today. But next episode, I'll go heavy into talking about busting nuts and, you know, whatever. <laughs> we'll figure out some low class shit to talk about. Oh, God. Well, hell yeah, right. I, I'm glad. Thanks for listening to that. And, and like to anybody out there, first of all, uh, there is an organization for people who want to just be get put on the register for um, stem cell donation. And it's called be the match.org. And it's not an invasive thing. You just sign up online. They send you like a swab that you just spit out. It's like a spit thing. You send it back. They put you in. And if you are lucky enough to get matched with somebody, you could save somebody's life. And you don't do anything other than it's maybe a few hours of your time at some point. Mm. So that's, that's super important. Be the match.org. And uh, yeah, man, like I know. Hey, shout about, out to uh, our Australian lady. Yeah, Gaylene. Shout out to yeah. Gaylene, my guardian angel. I, honestly, dude, I would love to talk more about her because I like the person who was my match she like does trapeze she used to be like a a dancer like one of those like uh rockette type dancers and shit oh man like, the, like a las vegas showgirl type oh man but we uh, definitely have to talk about that because i have to talk about that for sure i mean it's so all of a yes. thing that it's it's crazy and uh yeah i think that i just want to say to anybody going through that that there is like a way to get through it and it might seem like it's impossible but it's not and like I was in a really bad spot and you know I didn't get to I I hesitate to say that I went through like the worst thing that is possible but to me it was and to everybody out there like it, you can get through that shit and it's super important to know that so shout out to anybody who got that bad news you'll get through it and uh man it's just been super happy for me because like when I was going through it, like one of my biggest worries was like losing touch and not being able to like be friends with my close friends and not getting to have a relationship with them. Cause you know, I didn't know what, if I was ever going to live again. So to be where we're at now and you know, we don't live near each other, but to still have you in my life and is like a big win for me. So I'm just happy that Don Ron himself, Aaron is still my buddy. Like, <laughs> I've been cooking up some. Man. I've been cooking up some dope shit for you too, man. <laughs> in terms of uh, some some like movie shit. So if you well, really want to get well, up, I yeah. mean, I think that's um. We'll hopefully we'll get to look back on this in a few years, and we'll be off to bigger and better shit in that regard. But like to be where we're at now is like a huge win, and I know everyone's going through some tough shit, but. Just shout out to Aaron, man. It's good to have good friends in your life. And that's a big reason I got through all the shit that I went through is having good people surround me. Don't make me cry up on here, man. Love, love <laughs> you, bro. Love you, bro. And we'll be back next week with some dick and some uh, fart jokes. <laughs> oh, God. All right, y'all. Peace. All right. Later, y'all. Peace. Yeah.